Welcome to the No BS Short-Term Rental Podcast, an unfiltered look into the global vacation and short-term rental industry. I'm Mateo Bradford. And I'm John Stokinger. And this is our podcast. We bring the right people to the table at the right time, giving you an inside view and take on the short-term rental industry like no other podcast can. Good morning, Mateo. How are you? I am fantastic. West Coast this morning, so bright and early. Bright and early for the, you? Yeah, not so sunny Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's <laughs> like I tell you, it's like raining. I landed and it was immediately raining and cloudy. It's going to be that way, way that way for the next five days. So well, it's it's a balmy forty uh, ish um, here in you know in in the Midwest, and we're looking at uh, we're looking at getting up to sixty in midweek, and I'm sure it'll be snowing next week. So I'm right. you know whatever the case, it seems about normal um season two episode 12 13 i can't remember 13 maybe i whatever the case we're, we're knocking them down um i'm excited to actually don't even know what episode this is because maybe this one's going out this week maybe it's going out next week we'll see uh, but we're here and we have an amazing guest yes, we from do. from the other side of the pond uh, again, which is great. Love, love our um, everyone um, over in the UK and in Europe. Um, and we have some things we'd love to chat about with regards to Europe and things that are going on over there as well. Um, but without further ado, I'd love to go ahead and introduce the one and only the editor in chief. And please tell me if I'm, um, I, you know what? I I'll let him introduce himself because I'm I'm probably going to go ahead and say it all the way wrong. Paul Stevens. <laughs> John, Paul John, Stevens. John just gave you a raise, Paul. So. I know. I know. I should be asking for a pay rise already, but I'm 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 honoured. Um, well, thank, thanks first just for having me on. I'm I'm Paul Stevens. Um, I'm editor of a B2B website called ShortTermRentals.com. Um, hopefully, most of the people listening in have heard of us short-term rentals with a z as well they don't mm -hmm. question me why <laughs> why it's got the z um we're covering all the latest news uh, opinion intelligence from across the um global short-term vacation rental industry and um yeah we've been doing doing this about three and a half years now my first job out of uni so um yeah and my first ever proper um podcast doing doing something like this so uh Woo, <laughs> I, I love that right. i love that bet. <laughs> i'll use the word proper when talking about us well no 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 i I've, I've done i've done another podcast before and i have no favorites when it comes to this i'm, I'm <laughs> but, um, this is the first sort of in-depth or or feature length however however we're going to call it but um yeah great to be part of it Awesome. Well, that. we're excited to kind of dive in and talk about how you got to where, where you are and, and what's going on. Um, with that said, I want to let you know that, you know, you know, the, the No BS Short Term Rental Podcast, our focus is on news and culture. And when we're looking up news of the week, um, yep. you, you, uh, Skift, you know, focus wire, you know, fo though there's just a handful. Yeah. Um, Amy. And truly when I'm, when we're getting on and we're like, oh shoot, what, we didn't really look at the news. We pull your website up um oh, you know and right it's time. always up on our screen um so you know shout out to to all the you know the coverage that you're doing and staying on top of you know the 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 news that is that is in fact infecting affecting <laughs> our <laughs> yeah i guess it depends how you look at it um uh, our uh, industry yeah thank, thank you very much for that and honestly you don't have to say it if uh, just because we're on the I'm no, I'm not. Podcast. No, no, it's, it's actually, it's, um, that's actually, I, I, that's actually the truth, Paul, because there's not a whole lot of, so, I mean, and, and we can dig into this in a minute, but there's not a lot of, you know, news sources out there that give you the kind of geo perspective of our industry, right? You have very kind of segmented spaces. You have like, you know, uh, Amy in, in, um, in the Intel that, and that's, you know, US based a lot of times or, you know, even market specifically based. But for us in the States to get news of the industry from a global perspective and a geo perspective, there's not a lot of outlets unless you're doing like reading local newspapers and like doing the research yourself. So uh, yeah. You know, we, we give you your flowers while you're here. So, you know, and, and that's definitely no, uh, no uh, hyperbolic speech. That's real. So. Yeah, the interesting thank, thank thing, you. you know, Paul, if you're looking at my screen and I just start typing in my Google's bar, S-H-O-R-T, uh, short-term <laughs> rental news pops up. 
No. We ha we have noticed we're ranking quite um, highly on Google actually. Um, given we've only been going for three three and a half years now. It's quite That's crazy. It's something we can really sort of aspire to. But I've got a tremendous amount of respect for anyone in in the media landscape in travel and hospitality right now. Whether it's <laughs> Skift, whether it's Focus Wire, Focus Right, um, VRM Intel. I think everyone has their own space, their own sort of niche yep. within the industry. And hopefully we're fulfilling our own sort of um, segment within that. Um, and I mean, it's, it's just strange. I'm an editor and I started off, you know, in 2018 as, a, as an intern and then reporter. And just like everyone else, we've kind of been thrust into covering a global pandemic, which is completely new to all of us. Um, covering sort of having to wade sort of ever so slightly into geopolitical um, issues as well when I can't proclaim to be uh, an expert of any kind on these sorts of topics but um, you know people people are coming to our website then you've got to um, try and provide some sort of authority or something that they're not going to get elsewhere. Yeah and I think it's done well it, it you said something that just jogged a memory of mine. I remember meeting you on the floor of host. Host. <laughs> yeah. I remember, my, I, remember my I, was, I was a young, young pup back then. <laughs> Man, that seems like that was a while ago, but it, I mean, it really wasn't in, in the, you know, in the, in the long, in the scale, of, in the term, you know, scales of things. But so is that where it started? Is that your first kind of, like, what, what year? When was that? Was that, that 2019 was or 2019? 20, 2019. 19, so yeah. I'm, in, I'm in a bit of a time warp myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, where did 2020 and 2021 go? But yeah, we were sort of just a kind of a year um, in operation on on short term rentals. Like mm -hmm. our umbrella company, which is called International Hospitality Media, has been running a lot longer yep. than that. And we've shout had out a, to Piers, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, he'll, he'll love it that you gave him a shout out. Yeah, um, definitely. Good, great guy. We have, we have a boutique hotel news and a service department news website, but short term rentals is very much the, the new kid on the block. We started from scratch here, um, largely. There is the, always the crossover between hotels and service departments, right. but it, all the time we're growing our contact um, list as well and just having the opportunity to. Um, appear on a podcast and for people to actually care about my opinion is is mm -hmm. kind of surreal as well so well, <laughs> thank you let's talk about that let's talk about how like why short-term rentals for, I mean you you're you went to school to be a journalist you know you know that's that's a pretty wide topic you can you can report on anything like what what got you interested in hospitality and specifically you know short-term rent short-term rentals and let's and, you know, and then how did this all evolve? And like, I, you know, I, I see you've been an intern with the Brighton Argus, you're an intern uh, at <laughs> the, the Telegraph. So you did some different internships leading like, like yeah. talk, tell us your story. So I guess like a lot of people, when, when they talk about it, they kind of fell into this industry by accident. I don't know quite if that's the sort of same situation um, <laughs> you're both sticking your hands up there but um you know I was at uni only back in 2013 um graduated in 2017 but um it's just been a sort of complete whirlwind since then I I went in I studied languages so um was doing French and Spanish um tried to sort of dabble into a couple of other languages as well but that was really my my main passion at the time went into it with not really much of an idea of what I was going to do in terms of um, a job afterwards. I mean, I know I like kind of connecting with people. If you're going to a new country, you've got to go and speak their language. You've got to make that effort. And um, that's kind of quite rare, rare, I think, among sort of English speakers that we've kind of, we go to other countries and we kind of rely on on their knowledge of English to be able to communicate. But um, I think in some ways I've always been a sort of a, a paradox in a way because I'm, I'm really quite introverted as well. Mm -hmm. I think when people start, when people get to know me, they see that. But at the same time, I do like um, speaking to people and you know, I've always had an interest in travel as well. Um, my twin brother who um, he, 
went to do maths at university, but um, he's ended up at British Airways. Um, okay. so work it, work in the back end, I should add. But mm -hmm. um, you know, we're both ended up in in travel, funnily enough, and hospitality. I mean, I can't say I really had any experience of that before, but it was just. I and mean, I graduated from uni 2017. I had a, a year in in France, um, mm -hmm. studying for a bit, and also a little bit of time doing an internship on a on a paper in Malaga, an English language, and <laughs> so. Um, I had the sort of opportunity there to really develop my language skills and um, when I was at this newspaper in Spain I just thought I want to do a bit more of this and um, you, you quoted there a few bits of my experience I, I actually did a, like a week at the, the Daily Telegraph as well um, a couple of years ago and I was uh, on their sports desk um, for a couple mm. of days because I, I love sport as well um, it was kind of a, a mix up between do I go into travel or do I go into sport? Um, and I think the. What's your team? Uh, so you might not have even heard of them, but Portsmouth is my team. And I know you have a Portsmouth in, in the States, but mm -hmm. um, we, we used to, um, we used to be good. And we're now in the third tier. Um, I know it's soccer where you come from, but um, yeah. And kind of just, just from there, I joined sort of, back end of, of 2018 IHM and yeah I just sort of can't believe how quickly it's developed and all, all these new contacts and I think there's still such a, a long way we can go with it when yeah, when so you he's not with... a newbie no I'm saying he's not a newbie in the game like it's 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 wow. like you've got a lot of ex it's listening to the story and hearing where you came from you've you've got a diverse you know, kind of track that's not just like, oh, you were a college intern as a kid. You <laughs> you lived in France for a year, you lived in Malaga, you lived in these other places and I got work experience there. I hope it was paid uh, internship experience. Uh, you know, a lot of internships <laughs> over here are not paid and they're like, ah, oh, the experience is great. You build a career <laughs> off of it, but you've done that. How did those influence, how did those influence kind of what you do today, like that experience, especially working in travel and dealing with diverse languages and cultures and, and you know, our business can be so regional and so small, right, at times, yeah. and you have to, you know, write content that reaches across all of those cultures and people, and did that help you, that experience yeah, help I mean, you? I was, um, I guess... And news writing is still something that's quite quite new to me. When I was at the um, Argus, again, that was that was just a week um, back in yeah mid mid twenty eighteen. Then I was doing a little bit of work at the Telegraph um, that same year, and then within a couple of weeks, then I was getting this job. Um, so my kind of experience with um, news writing is still is still quite small, relatively. And, um in the in the lead up to this but um now i've always had this passion for news and whether it comes from travel whether it's sport it's just sort of, and social media has really accelerated this you, you want to be on top of yeah. everything that's happening at the moment i'm the same with ukraine at the moment every i mean i'm i've got a twitter addiction or something i'm always looking at the um at the latest updates and everything and um maybe not always healthy to be doing that at, at this moment but um and, and even when I actually talk about my job with friends or with family and I say I'm doing this website it's about short-term rentals Airbnb holiday lets that sort of thing they I mean I basically have to describe it in a new way each time because they don't quite get what I what I mean by it people don't understand how big an industry this is where it's going to be in the future as well even though you know short-term rentals is a completely different segment to hotels but it's mm -hmm. really come into this own into its own during the pandemic and I think most people generally have stayed at a cottage or stayed at an Airbnb or an apartment so even mm -hmm. if you've only had one stay you've had at least some entrance into the into the sector before so I think yeah. the I think the interesting thing, what you said, you know, the, the, you'd said that the pandemic brought uh, short term rentals into the, the forefront. Um, and I think I think there's a lot that's true with that statement. With that said, I think that the 
that overall it would have gotten there anyways. It was already very, very much on its way there. Um, it just accelerated it. It brought it, it maybe got it there a couple of years earlier than, but I think that, we, you know, no pandemic, we, you know, in a year or two, we'd, we'd be seeing these same numbers anyways, um, because people are, are realizing the benefits um, uh, of that in, in general. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. You, you mentioned, you know, having a, a Twitter addiction and, and just being, a, a, um, you know, plugged in. It's kind of hard to not be plugged in with everything that's going on. Um, you know, and I think that's a double-edged sword for me, especially with social media, because like, I always want to know like what's going on and like in same, even with this podcast, like I, I'll sit there and look at the numbers. I'm like, Oh, and then I'll get down on myself. If like one episode didn't do as well as the other one, or like, I'll get I'll look at one episode. <laughs> I'm, and like, why the hell is that one I'm, blowing I'm up? The same. You can obsess over this. <sighs> and I'm like, like there's one episode we did. That's like seven times like better than any other episode. I'm like, why, how can we replicate <laughs> that? It doesn't make any sense. Are you able to say who it is? <laughs> no, I, it's, it's true. It's uh, the Hopper episode. It's the one with, uh, oh. I mean, shameless self promotion. No, yeah. right. I'll no show the numbers. No I'm gonna I'll believe that shit. Like now, you have to. No, I'm just kidding. He's checking the stats every <laughs> minute on that. <laughs> um, but you know, let, it's kind of hard to not, you know, with a focus on everything that's going on in the Ukraine. Um, and there's there's news from you know from every whoops everywhere. Uh, and and I don't really want to get into the politics behind it. But what's I, I do kind of want to talk about what um, as an industry we're doing, and you you went ahead and, and reported uh, yesterday I think came out uh, Airbnb pledges um, whatever however many homes um, to a hundred thousand hundred thousand homes and you know to uh, refugees um, which is an, an extension of what they've done to in the past for other refugees of other countries mm-hmm. you know do you want to go ahead and talk about that a little bit and. Yeah, well, I'd say I'd say it's important to recognise that it's also they've done it for twenty one thousand Afghan refugees yep. as well, yeah. or, or not yep. just Afghans, but refugees escaping or fleeing Afghanistan. So this isn't something that's completely new. Um, and yeah, I mean, I I'm I'm really encouraged to see more initiatives like this. I think the whole if we look back on the early start of the pandemic, again, I won't get too political about things, but um, Airbnb and other and other platforms as well, this isn't a pile on to, to anyone in particular, but you know, we had booking platforms that were getting a lot of criticism, um, rightly or wrongly, from customers who were saying uh, about refunds and about um, you know, the the flexibility of their stays and they've reacted to that. I think they have listened and I think there is a desire to um, sort of think about the the wider impact of what's happening in the world. And these are completely, um, again, I don't really like to use the word unprecedented, but who who among us has lived in times like these where we've got um, wars happening, all, all over the world um and we're now being in a we're now in a position where we've kind of got to report on it but we've mm-hmm. got to think how do we report on it we've mm-hmm. got to look at sort of quite a considered and sensitive approach to it and not just rushing into it and just thinking okay this is a big story we need to put a story out there and we need to get thousands of clicks on that it's it's not yeah. about that You've it's bigger than that it. and yeah. it, it's not about the impressions and the clicks and it and, and that's why i like the unbiased approach that that you and and a lot of the the other you know especially in short-term rentals with a with a z um mm-hmm. is you know <laughs> it's especially i like that unbiased approach is important and we're not getting that from 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 everyone and uh, uh, you, you may have seen the same thing as well, but my LinkedIn um, feed at the moment is full of um, um, pictures and videos and, and posts about Ukraine. I'm very glad it is and that we think of LinkedIn as being this professional version of Facebook, but mm. the platform is being used in a much different way now mm. and it's being used to talk about certain issues. Even got people apologising 
for saying, you know, my life is in danger here or my business is, um, but they're just sort of explaining what's going on to us. This is, this is a, a war that suddenly, um, you know, with, with Afghanistan, it is sort of halfway across the world. And, you know, I, I don't like to, um, I think, I think all wars should be sort of, um, the coverage for all wars should be, should be the same, regardless of where it is geographically. But the yeah. thought of it being on our, almost on our doorstep in Europe here is something that's new to us and is, is quite scary, even from, from a distance there. So it's um, certainly a, a new uh, landscape that we're living through. And we've got to think about all of the messaging that we're putting out. Are we, is, is it the timing? Is it the type of content that people are looking for? So the Airbnb story was completely relevant yesterday. Already I'm talking to a lot more people who are doing things behind the scene and we're going to hear yeah. um, a lot more. I know, I know with hospitality.fm, our, our parent company that, that we were, we're, we're, we're uh, there'll be a link in how, how ones can donate um, that we're yeah. going to go ahead and share. I know, yeah. I know Will is, is, is worked hard behind the scenes to go ahead and put something together. Um, so we'll, yeah. Yeah. Hey, really but good. so my question, I have a question for both of you here. Like, I, I think this is unprecedented, right? Like in terms of, you know, we've lived through wars, we know that war happens in the world, but <clears throat> you know, one of my favorite sayings is always like, hey, you know, and we were talking about like diplomacy and being Switzerland and not picking sides. And, and again, not getting into the specifics of the politics, but I think there's an overall humanitarian message of like, I've never seen the unity of this kind of, gra like at this scale where people are like, this is not okay. Like what's happening right now is not okay. Now take the politics out of it, whatever, what is going on, the actions of what is happening right now is not okay. And seeing this unified front, you know, again, and I, we haven't seen this type of kind of collaboration at this scale since, you know, I, I'm on, uh, the last real global, global conflict that we've seen. And so, you know, do we see that continue? Is this going to, you know, be the case moving forward when literally Switzerland is involved in something that they typically never get involved with? Like that's definitive of, I think, this time in this space and, and where the world is going and things that are happening. This is very real. Um, I mean, even, I mean, not so much to us, but even closer to you, we were talking about these things earlier, like, it's real in the States because we've spoken up about this. We've been speaking up about this. We're doing things, you know, with our government and things that are doing things, but in terms of reach, proximity, culture, Wait, talk about that. Cause you they, there's the a lot to... have a very different, very different vantage point from that because not only are you closer proximity, but Russia is a, large part of the uk culture mm. right as well mm. and 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 i not don't know as much about ukraine you know in in your society and, and in your culture within that space but can you talk to that a bit um how is that affecting your life like day to day like relationships things like that uh john do, or shall, shall, I, shall i take that yeah go ahead i mean you, you're you're much closer than than I. I i definitely have some some things i'd like to say but why don't you jump in yeah i mean i i wouldn't um sort of um i wouldn't sort of look at myself as being too affected by it because I, i'm still in the uk and, and ukraine is mm -hmm. um you know going through an extremely difficult situation right now to put it to put it mildly mm -hmm. i i would say as well trying to sort of keep in, impartial about it because that's what we always do with our content is the the, the people who are you know essentially in, invading ukraine and um and causing this i think there is a desire to cause chaos um mm -hmm. in europe and you know seeing this is such, the hospitality and travel industries are so tight knit. I think the majority of us don't see each other as, as rival companies. There, there is a, a real synergy and a real bond between everyone. Mm -hmm. I think the way that the, un, the industry is coming together now, and I think more stories like what you're doing, which is fantastic with hospitality.fm, 
think we're going to see more and more of these stories come through. And I think that is the perfect riposte to those who who seek to divide us, really. Um, we also wrote a story yesterday about uh, this marketing agency called Stay the Night, who we've worked with before. Um, and they're encouraging um, hotels, hostels, other types of accommodation providers as well to, um, they're partnering with a company called Budget Traveller and they're setting up this accommodation directory for um, hosts in neighboring countries to, to Ukraine to um, offer their accommodation and you can just see it there on, on their directory. So I'd encourage people to check that out as well. We'll go ahead and make sure um, yeah. we get a link for that and we'll go ahead and put it in the, on the website as well. With it's, I was just looking at a map um, and, and seeing where, you know, the distance between the UK and uh, the Ukraine, right? And it, here, for those that are listening and you're looking at the US, it's like the tip of Maine all the way to like, you know, it's like the farthest reaches in the continental US is about the same distance. Mm -hmm. So, it's it's uh you know us is a, is a huge country um geographically um with that said it's you know it's still not that far like in the grand scheme of things get globally escalated um and, and it's interesting being being a, a united states citizen and 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 having you know trying to stay out of the politics here in this in this podcast but but understanding that not everyone like our involvement in global issues as a country um, is uh, um, well uh, bullyish, uh, to say the least, in in lots of instances, and we affect um, positively or negatively global change. And and if I look at the whole world, not just say the UK, Europe, and the US, like not just our allies, I think globally. <laughs> People look at the U.S. and U.S. citizens and our government and our and and whoever is sitting at our, as our president at whatever time it is, as potentially like a joke sometimes. Um, and so that's hard because you know I'm reading all sorts of different sides of like why this is a thing. You know who started it? Why is it? You know and there there's always two sides to every story. And mm -hmm. what you know here in the U.S. we have what our our media is putting out as the truth. But then I can go on to some interesting you know alternative media sites and being like, well, no, that's bullshit. You know, truly this is what's happening and this is why it's happening. And X Y Z. So I think everyone just has to like take that into consideration when, and, and we're talking about what the difference, you know, Matteo brought up the differences in as like, this is unprecedented. I know we use this word all the friggin' time, right? <laughs> unprecedented, unprecedented, unprecedented. Is it unprecedented because it's so new or is it unprecedented because there's so much coverage on it? There's so much 24, like it all started with CNN, right? Back in the day with 24 hours news coverage, right? And that was like, in like, you know, now it's like, there's th thousands of 24 hours news coverages on social media. And there's so like people are plugged in. I can look at my phone right now and I go to like 17 different apps and I'm going to have a different story about what's going on. And it's in your face all the time. Is that why this is unprecedented? Because we're so plugged in and it, therefore, in turn, it's making people like, are we coming together more as a, a humanitarian effort because we're forced to? I'm using air quotes here because like we're so plugged in that we're, we're forced to take a side. Like, I don't know, there's this is a, I'm, I'm sorry to get so deep here <laughs> on this, but I think that it's not necessarily unprecedented in what's going on because the world has always had people that want to go ahead and, and take. You know, we've been a big part of it here in the US. We go and take, right? And every country has some sort of going and taking. And then therefore, there's always a negative outcome when someone takes something. But we're just more plugged into it now. Mm. So is it really unprecedented? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of these questions as well, which I, I, I could honestly say I don't feel qualified to, to answer really in, in some way, because, um, yeah, I think, I think we're all coming into these really um, challenging questions now where we've never 
particularly had to answer those before. Um, and um, but you know this this um, <laughs> I don't know. I might have to cut this. Sorry, out. sorry for getting so deep on you. <laughs> but no, but I think so. John, you bring up a good, but you bring up a good point. Twenty four hour news cycles and other things. Like I, I think the event itself in terms of Russia going into Ukraine and everything, all the hype leading up to it. I think the the response is what I was really you know, getting into in terms of the universal condemnation at this scale is something that we have not seen. You know, when you know, countries have, yes, countries have raided, have, have gone and invaded other countries, whether they say it's a defensive posture or they're doing X, Y, or Z, you know, what I, I do think, you know, having to figure out whatever narrative that is you know, it falls down the political lines, but I think they're, in terms of what we see, in terms of what we've known, in terms of like this whole kind of process from beginning to end, you know, this is oh, how we're not gonna invade, we don't wanna invade, this isn't what we're doing, we're going to protect this, getting the narrative on the other side, that's bullshit, this isn't happening, like, you know, again, we, how can we be these oppressors when we're this small group of people? Like, and again, you know, we aren't there, we aren't on the ground, but the narrative that has come out, whether it's through media, through people, you know, through first person accounts, through all of these things has, you know, come into this gumbo pot or this big kind of consensus of this isn't okay. Right. And when is the last time we've seen the world stand up in a manner in which it's standing up for Ukraine right now. I mean, maybe I've just been you know, I, I mean, hibernated and missed that. That's what's unprecedented to me, is the response in terms of what's happened. P Putin did this before, he raided Crimea, he got Crimea back, he, he, he wanted it, he took it. Georgia, he's doing the same thing. And maybe I just like geopolitics and look into these things a little more than other people do, but I, right. again, this isn't the first time he's done these types of things, but he's never received a response like this. And when we look at this, like there's all kinds of stories that are coming out of this. I don't know if you heard about the African students that have been trying to leave the country and what's going on with Nigeria. Like there's all these sub stories that make this- Yeah, it's interesting, like complex. going trying to go to Poland, but Poland at first was going ahead and not letting them in. And then Poland was going ahead and now giving them- They got pulled off message. trains. Yeah, like they were like, you, you can't yeah. go, but y'all can go. Like, so there's all these things and I'm not gonna dig into those details. I mean, but I will say, go check out these stories because there's so many things that are happening right. in parallel with this that make this, this isn't a black and white issue across the board. But it's interesting that there is, it, it does seem to be a black and white issue that the world has accepted in terms of the overall event being not okay. Right. And what is that going to do to our world, you know, from a geopolitical standpoint, right? Like, and, you know- I guess only the, time will tell. I mean, yeah. ultimately only time will tell at how this all shakes out. But I think the, yeah. the you know, I don't want to go ahead and, and keep this whole pod on this um, with, you know, because I definitely want to get into the shorties. Um, and, and, to, and but what I do want to say, and, and, and there'll be my last statement on it is I feel for the people of, yeah. of the Ukraine and the Russian people, like the, the that yeah. are like, definitely. are not part of the decision making, they are yeah. just, they are collateral damage. Yeah. Um, and so and all the people that are that are, are fleeing, uh, and I think that ultimately, everybody can come together and know that, what's happening to these people are um is is unjust and and hopefully there this can be um they get some closure on this soon yeah, I, agree. I, I think he both articulated that a lot better than i could so um yeah well let's talk shorties Let, let's 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 get out of this and let's let's talk shorties <laughs> Number one, I said I wasn't going to mention it, but I'm still bent that I didn't win oh uh, last year. And I'll keep bringing this up. I, it's all right. Yes, that's, this is my base. <laughs> You're looking on the video. It's a very small fiddle. Thank you. Um, with that said, uh, I, it was the, the build up to the shorties last year was super exciting. Like I was like being a finalist, I was like really geeked up about it and like in and, and watching everyone else and voting. It was so cool. And it seems like not only have you replicated that feel and that vibe and everything that happened last year, I know, which was the second rendition of the shorties, 
um, now you're coming back even bigger and better uh, for Shorties 2022. Let's talk about what is the Shorties and what's going on and, and give us a backstory and, and, and how can those people that want to get involved get involved? Yeah, so um, the Shorties... Um, with a Z. Yeah, yeah the Shorties with a Z. Uh, a Z. <laughs> um, it's um, our awards for the, the global short-term vacation rental industry and essentially anyone anyone can enter, whether you're a uh, host with, with one property, whether you're uh, a multi-billion dollar company like Airbnb, um, we've got 20 categories that are open to um, a whole range of people. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It doesn't matter the size of your company. We're trying to be as inclusive and as diverse as possible. And, um, you know, when we, we launched this back in um, 20... Uh, I've got to think about it now, 2019, mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of that year. And then we held our first one in 2020, in March 2020. And when I think back to that date, that's almost one of the last times when we were all together. Yep. We held it on a, on a boat and, um, you know, this will always, that will always be the starting point for us. Last year, we had to hold the um, awards completely virtually. So it was a completely different thing to prepare for from the first year um and then you're trying to grow it as well and then this i was year, in crested butte by the way um in a coffee shop uh during that during the <laughs> really? shorties awards crossing my fingers and then i said no! <laughs> i was it's, dude I, I, can you I, give I'm, him can you give him like a shorty just like a, an honorary <laughs> shorty or something because like this dude is scarred for life but, and really? he and, and to be fair like he was because the, the the shorties are their like first big award show for our industry right like i know you know there, there's other award shows going on but like the shorties was the first right john was hype about but, it. i mean when when i hear reactions like that i mm -hmm. i, I don't really know how to feel because I, i'm just kind of um amazed really but mm -hmm. it, it stirred up this sort of emotion from people Mm -hmm. I think it shows that we've done the right thing in, in launching these awards, whether you're um, ecstatic from winning or from making a short list, whether you're incandescent with rage yeah. because you, you haven't <laughs> made a short list or um, something. I mean, I have the benefit of, kind of looking, I can see all of the entries that we've got um, every year, all, all sorts of different companies and different countries entering as well. Um, and yeah, we've, recognized a lot of companies in our first two years already mm -hmm. i think we've only had two maybe two repeat winners so far um so i think i think it shows that sort of emotion shows that we're doing we're doing the right thing and that there's still a long way we can go with it yeah. um it's kind of i don't know what was already out there but um you know, I think the industry was probably calling for something like this and then coinciding yeah. with the pandemic where we can, where it's almost more important now that we recognise mm -hmm. the efforts that everyone's gone to. And, you know, I think, John, you were a fan fantastic candidate last year um, for that sure. award. And, you know, everyone else was was very worthy as well. Um, well, shout, shout out to to everyone else that was that was alongside that, that lost alongside me and to Elizabeth Becker, who who won in our category with high b and um, You know, I, I want to go ahead and give the accolades because they, they are well deserved. I, I, obviously, I joke and this is in, in jest, but it's uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it is, uh, you know, it, it's great to bring a positive attention that's outside of all this money that's getting thrown out and just growing and scaling, like, you know, the, the categories are, are really interesting and it's, and, and you, you hit the nail on the head with, you know, being inclusive. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're some yeah. super, super powerhouse company or you're a small company, um, you know, just, I, I think it's more of a, you're making waves in one way or another um, in the space and and they should be recognized one way or another as well and, and the shorties so do a great job of doing that thank you um that, that that means a lot to us obviously and um you know there's always people have always sending their questions through about the mm -hmm. awards some people have entered every year and some people are new to it every year so you've yeah. got to treat everyone 
everyone the same but um you know the thing about our awards maybe that is slightly different to others i don't know how far i can comment but our awards are completely free to enter i mean you can enter you know 10 categories 20 categories however many you want to and and you're eligible for um and you know as long as you can submit an entry and you can fulfill the sort of criteria that we're looking for then you know that that makes you a worthy um entrant into the awards and we're opening up to glamping we're opening up to camping um uh who else um rvs motorhomes boats um you know all sorts of people really so truly hospitality yeah so absolutely so th- those are listening. There will be a link in the in the on the website as well. So we're gonna we're gonna have a few different links. Um, a link to donate uh, for Ukraine efforts. We'll also have a link to uh, short term rental news, and we'll have a link to the shorties. Um, uh, I filled that out last year. It's if you don't want to go ahead and and you have a hard time nominating yourself, um, which I do, and, um, I do. and we yeah. do. It's you know you can have <laughs> have someone that. Uh, that knows you well and be willing to go yeah. ahead and put some good words in for you. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there is, um, it's, it's really not that hard to do. Um, and I encourage everyone to go ahead and, uh, and submit an application. I think the more the merrier, it's going to make it uh, a bigger and better pool. Well, John, you were worthy. I do want to, I don't want it to seem like I was knocking you. Oh no, you're totally not. You, you, you were, I, I'm okay with it though. I'm not knocking you. You were worthy. <laughs> I, I was actually surprised that they, because again, being regional, right? Like the things you were doing, I don't think the, a lot of people knew, like the, the things that you do in the back end. Um, so, you know, you're definitely but, worthy. Uh, even if you didn't win. Yeah, we covered the, the story about the, um, the artwork, John, yep. that you were working on last year. So I remember that quite clearly. Um, you know, I always thought that you would be, um, you know, you should definitely submit an application. And I get it that people, um, you know, I would probably be the same. I, I, I'm not sure how I would feel about um, submitting myself for uh, a personal award like that. But I think you kind of got to look more, uh, holistically as well and see that it's not necessarily just an award for you or, or for your company but it's um, part of something bigger and really recognizes what you're doing contributing to the growth of the industry we had we had 350 plus entries last year That's um, insane. we had a, a voting period that lasted one week which is half of what it was the year before when we got 12,000 and we got 69,000 last year um oh, absolutely crazy <laughs> statistics. Yeah. i think we had about 11 12 000 people voting within that but wow that's a lot of people a lot of eyeballs on people's companies um or, or organizations or campaigns that people are doing and, um, and, and you guys have some fantastic judges too it's not like yeah. you're just you're you know paul's just the only judge going yeah i think this one looks man, good that, 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 that like, people, eh. that people who know that stuff really so. <laughs> <laughs> so so i i definitely encourage you to check out the shorties see who the judges are um you know go ahead and and put your put an entry in put 10 entries into 10 different you know categories why not um, if you're uh, if you feel that you should you know what you're doing in your efforts should uh, receive some recognition go ahead and uh, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and, and put it in hey yeah. paul i'm sorry what are you gonna say sorry sorry well you've, you've basically got to be in it to win it anyway and you know it doesn't have to be just a you don't have to write an essay or anything mm-hmm. for this necessarily it could be a video it could be um a kind of presentation or something um we're also holding the awards this year at the skyline london it's very very close to uh, tobacco dock london as well where they're hosting the yep. uh, short stay summit a day later so we really want to get um or we'll combine the audiences for those and there'll be some great networking and uh, hopefully some some fun as well for people along the way awesome that's awesome Paul, thanks so much for joining us today, man. And is yeah. there anything else that, that we missed the uh, the the boat on? And it, I, I say boat because I, I remember the, <laughs> the picture of you with your mm-hmm. your captain's hat on. That, that was that was given to me. <laughs> I, yeah, there is. There's one more. Who thing knows what it'll be this year? <laughs> yeah. No, there's uh, one more thing. You know, Paul needs to get credit for 
us coming together, man. Like one thing I do want to make sure mm -hmm. that I appreciate with you is, you know, during all of the events during 2020 and the crazy things that were going on in this world, you know, I am a person who would rather see a sermon than hear one any day. And so action is important to me. And you know, when you you reached out and pulled that panel together um, of, you know, a diverse body of people within the industry to start having some conversations to take a real hard look at who we are and, and what our business is and, and, you know, what diversity means to our business. Um, that was that was top notch to me, man. And uh, I, we, John, I know, and I and I know John was involved too. Like this really helped, kind of us understand what was needed within this space. Um, and you know, a lot of the things that we're doing in VRMA and DEI and other things, you know, really we're like, I right, we got to step it up and do this. So, uh, shout out to you for putting that together. Thank you for reaching <laughs> out to us uh, to you know to to be involved in that and and to you know really you know started addressing things to make us a better industry so wow thank you i mean definitely want to say it, that. The, the thing that's unusual for me in this circumstance is that i don't particularly sort of like talking about myself too much really i'm i'm much more interested in what other people have got to say and yep. you know i love i love hearing from new people and and connecting so if you're not already connected or if we haven't really spoken before then please do reach out and um you know, hopefully we can grow this industry together. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Well said. Thank you.